Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, in uh, his book, Out, I believe it was in Outliers, he he uh, talks about the concept and, and illustrates various examples of to attain any level of of significant expertise in any discipline, 10,000 hours are required. Now, there's, you know, differing views on that. Some people have, have presented some compelling arguments for and against. But the general thought is, you know, like he uses the Beatles, for example, that you, you have to you have to put in a certain number of hours uh, practicing and in front of audiences and songwriting and and working the scales and and doing all of the work before you can become an expert at what you do and um, that's kind of the the premise of his ten thousand hours approach. So no matter no matter what your discipline, if you want to be a skateboarder, if you want to be a, a musician, you want to be a business coach, you you damn well put better put in the reps or your expertise is not going to be there. Entrepreneurs, we are recording today from Florida all the way out to Oregon because we are bringing on someone who has truly dedicated himself to his craft. We were just talking behind the scenes and his positivity and his passion are contagious to what he has going on. Vincent A. Lancey here, back with another episode of That Entrepreneur Show. Dan, thanks for taking a few minutes to stop by. Vincent, thanks so much. It's Pleasure and a privilege to talk to you and then your listeners. I love your podcast, man. I appreciate the kind words and for being a listener. Everyone, every week we try to bring on a few different topics. Today, we're going to look at navigating business transformation, powerful coaching methodology, tackling leadership challenges, and some myth busting on business ownership. Professionally, he's reached well over 5,000 individuals, employees, their families, which again is true dedication. Everyone out there, entrepreneurship is the long haul, the long game. And now with 35,000 face-to-face coaching hours, he really encompasses everything he's learned with Malcolm Gladwell's famed 10,000 philosophy. (laughs) Before we dive in, this episode is brought to you by Coming Alive Podcast Productions, bringing you full-service podcast production at any level. Jose, I always love to start my guests with something along the lines of what the heck made you want to become an entrepreneur? Society's norms are always telling us, hey, do X, Y, Z, cash out on Friday every week, the same thing. Why'd you choose to do something different? <laughs> you know, it uh, it was my own youthful exuberance and uh and honestly my naivete i think that got me into entrepreneurship it was you know late 90s uh i was digging the coffee house vibe that whole scene and was working for a, a natural foods company um back in colorado and and you know i just wanted to do my own thing um uh as most entrepreneurs do we think we can kind of be our own boss and and uh and the reality hits us pretty hard, pretty quick that, that yep. we're actually now the, we're actually uh, now reporting to all of our customers, at least as much as we were to our former bosses and our previous ambitions. And um, anyway, went out to the Oregon coast, started up a restaurant with uh, my partner at the time. And um, we ran that for about eight, eight years, almost 10 years and varying degrees of success. Truth be told, Vincent, I, man, I really had no right uh, trying to start and own and run a business. I was, I would have been the perfect, uh, coaching client that I coach today. And, um, anyway, as as some time went along, discovered that wasn't exactly the going to be a more than a lifestyle business for us. It wasn't going to provide the the long-term future we're looking for as many entrepreneurs discover at some point. Um, not all, but many, and so kind of went back to school, retooled, got my accounting degree. I wanted to do something that was helpful and useful. I had a couple of people mentoring me. As I said, I kind of didn't didn't know uh, really what I was doing. Had a few people mentor me when I had the restaurant. And that that impact that they they provided me inspired my next trajectory, which started out in accounting and then ultimately led me into uh, a more kind of broad discipline of business coaching and executive coaching. I love that. And one of the first things I wrote down for when we go live, think you have no right to own a business. I love how you had the humility to say that where that's that itty bitty committee in a lot of our heads, that imposter syndrome where, hey, why this can be us, this can be you. And you're a perfect proof of that. I want to 
before we get too far past you exiting this company of 12 years, congratulations on that. What was your biggest takeaway from that exit experience for anyone out here listening on today that is right there, but they got some butterflies? From that restaurant? From from leaving something after 12 years. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, um, I, I would point to... Uh, look, this is, this is actually going to be a, a shameless plug for business coaching. You know, uh, there's a certain amount of self-awareness that is required. Um, I call it reconciling reality, um, that, that is required and you have to be able to do that in your own self-awareness. And that's difficult, if not impossible to attain from within your own head. You know, you may have partners or a spouse or friends that can reflect a lot of truth back to you, but in reality, there's probably nobody that can apply the context of your specific situation to the conversation, right? We're very siloed as business owners and entrepreneurs and that that isolation or lack of appropriate reflection and accountability as much as anything, it's going to hold you back every time. And so, um, yeah, it's a shameless plug for business coaching, but, but it, it doesn't have to be me. It's, but you should get somebody in your corner that can hold up a mirror, hold you accountable. Um, uh, you have to be willing and able to reconcile that reality. And I, I, you know, I have a philosophy of trying to distill that down too. And I could get into that if you want a little more information on that, but, but um, you have to be willing and able to do that. And I think that that's an incredible lesson where what sounds great to us may not sound great to the rest of the world. It's happened to me. You need someone else to give you that constructive feedback. Like, Hey, yeah. Dan, you got to pivot a little bit. You got to go from there. Even as entrepreneurs, when we're working a lot of the times on our own, we can't do it on our own. We have to have someone else. Or in my case, I'm even grateful to have my advisory board right? just looking out for me every month, talking about what's on my plate and just making those small changes. What has been the biggest development in your world now? I know I've got your bio, your information sheet, excuse me, that came in front of me. I know you're up to a lot. What do we want the listeners to know about the latest in your world? Latest in my world, you know, I've developed, um, so over the 12, 13 years now that I've been a business and executive coach, I've been able to develop, you know, case by case, tool by tool, client by client, uh, a roadmap of the different processes and disciplines that we have to know about. You know, I mentioned a minute ago, you have to be both willing and able. Unfortunately, uh, the willingness comes, you know, entrepreneurs are, are uh, ambitious, audacious types. And so that willingness is usually there. Uh, for the challenge, or we think that it is, uh, and it's a good thing because of how difficult it can be. But you also have to be able to uh, address the issues that are going to come up in a business. And so over the years, I've been able to develop a, a roadmap, a toolkit related to the different disciplines within business. So everything from self-organization, self-management, to um, to team development, to uh, marketing and 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 sales tools to operational systems and and especially financial clarity with that being a big part of my background and really explain the fundamentals that that we don't come to the table understanding about entrepreneurship and about business ownership and you know that pride that we have that hubris that is frankly it's got to required as an entrepreneur you got to have a certain amount of like uh uh excess confidence waiting in the wings that can also be to our detriment, right? Because right. we don't want to admit that we ha might have blind spots and things. Um, if you're not, if if you don't know the difference between a PL and a balance sheet, and you're not looking at them at least monthly, if not weekly or more, um, you're avoiding that thing, and uh, you need to brush up. You got to, you have to have a certain amount of of minimum competency in these things. Even if you're outsourcing the stuff, you damn well better know what you're asking for from your accountant and then be able to use that information when they give it to you. Or if you're going to delegate to a team of managers, you damn well better know how to delegate and do it in a healthy way and know what are the KPIs and the metrics that you're looking for from them. And so, you know, you have to have these minimum competencies in the subject matter. And, and beyond that, if you, if you're not ready for that, you're going to get steamrolled. I love that. You just explained why you need to understand your financials and check them frequently. Things are always changing and you got to stay on top of everything. Unfortunately, that's what being an entrepreneur is. You build out a team as he just alluded to. What are some tips you've had from over your career of things to look for as you build out a team member? Building out a team member. I, I would uh, probably the first thing that I'd get at is that 
you know, people talk about, well, it's just business. It's not personal. And I, you know, forgive the salty language, but I'll call bullshit on that every day. Um, business is nothing if not personal. You have an assembly of human beings that are showing up every day doing your bidding. They're trading the hours and minutes of their life for your money, but they're still human beings and they come with their own challenges and struggles and frustrations and strengths and all the great attributes that they each have. And if you're not hiring the person to the greatest degree possible and training the job, um, I mean, they have to have certain competencies, no doubt about it. You can't hire, you know, a, a janitor to be a brain surgeon. Not that, you know, anything against janitors, they're incredibly skilled at what they do, but they're not brain surgeons and vice versa. You don't need a brain surgeon if if you just need somebody to to clean the place. Right. Um, so to the greatest degree possible, you've got to hire the people who align with your values, who are um, balanced in their approach with their confidence and their humility. They can take constructive feedback. They, uh, like I said, align with your values. You can inspire them to your vision. Um, you got to build out a team that um, is ready to pick up an oar and row the boat in the direction that that you've that you've guided that you've set a vision toward. What's that expression? If you uh, if you, if you think you're leading a team and you turn around and nobody's following you, you're just out taking a walk. I actually have never heard that, but I think that's perfect. <laughs> but to build yourself up to the level of to succeed as you have for all of these years, some things have to be going well. And I know we mentioned very briefly that you're big on the 10,000 philosophy with Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk more about that for the audience. Sure. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell in uh, his book, out, I believe it was in Outliers, he he uh, talks about the concept and, and illustrates various examples of to attain any level of of significant expertise in any discipline, 10,000 hours are required. Now, there's, you know, differing views on that. Some people have, have presented some compelling arguments for and against. But the general thought is, you know, like he uses the Beatles, for example, that you, you have to you have to put in a certain number of hours uh, practicing and in front of audiences and songwriting and and working the scales and and doing all of the work before you can become an expert at what you do. And um, that's kind of the the premise of his 10,000 hours approach. So no matter, no matter what your discipline, if you want to be a skateboarder, if you want to be a, a musician, you want to be a business coach, you, you damn well put better put in the reps or your expertise is not going to be there. I love that. Do you apply any of these concepts in this area to these companies you save on financial brink? Everyone out there, this is another one of his strengths out here. This guy's like Superman. He's got, he's got all the hats that he wears, but he wears them effectively. <laughs> Let's talk more about that, where some things you really help these companies are right off the bat. If anybody out there is listening on, they're having some trouble. We got the guy here. Yeah, you bet. Um, the the best place that I think entrepreneurs can go is, especially, you know, we're so constrained on time and resources and energy of, of, and money, of course, um, that we have to find leverage right out of the gate. And that's one of the things that I like to work on with my clients right out of the gate is let's find some leverage. A lot of people, you know, you can read a book and it's going to kind of like a sniper identify some single frustration that you have. And that's, that's going to be useful. What's more useful is if you can find leverage. So, uh, even something as simple as, as, you know, if you're working with somebody great, if you're just in front of your whiteboard, that that'll be suitable too. But identifying all of your frustrations, all the places where you're struggling, say, say it's in finance. What are all the, all of the places where, um, your financials are in jeopardy or not optimized. If you list all of those things, you're going to start to discover some patterns, and that's where you want to start focusing your attention right out of the gate because you're going to get some short-term wins there. If you can pull one lever and affect 10 different things, pull the damn lever, right? That's the first place that you've got to go. Don't try and address things that might that it might feel important to you because it's it's, you know, it's your baby or it's your pet project or whatever. Look for the leverage. That's the first place that I'd I'd suggest. I love that. Look for the leverage. Another golden nugget after an episode full of them. But before we find out his contact information, what? Hmm. I always like to end the show with like a nice powerful one at the end here. <laughs> What's one piece of advice you can give me this time from one of these, all these hours you put in with these face-to-face -face meetings, one notable conversation that stuck out after all these years. One notable conversation. Um, uh, it goes goes back to a, 
a concept that I refer to as the three pillars. And the three pillars are about your expectations, your relationships, and your balance and how you interface with all of those in your business, right? If you're not setting the expectations, managing them, somebody else is. Same thing with your relationships, what your relationships to yourself, to your people, to your team, your relationships to concepts like money or authority or vulnerability, and then balance is the third pillar. And if you're out of balance, you're really going to um, struggle. You're going to use whatever strength has gotten you this far. You're going to continue to try and use that strength. And that's not what you need for this next stage. So the the when I can apply those three pillars with a client and ask them to, to really go deep on that question and, and vulnerably answer the questions, um, and again, sometimes that requires a third party to, uh, to reflect back some hard truths to you. When I go... Uh, and, and frame a, uh, uh, some solutions from that perspective of those three pillars, your re expectations, relationships, and balance, where they're now out of balance or where they're maybe out of whack, that's the best starting point you can get to and, um, and, uh, and find that self-awareness that, that's going to be required of you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, everyone. We touched on a lot today, but it was value-filled from start to finish. I always appreciate when guests come on. So thank you so much and doing all of that. Where can we find you online? You bet. You can go to bestself.coach. That's where uh, you'll find specifics about uh, the program and uh, clearingobstacles.com. Also the same name of a podcast that I'm about to launch season two on, but you'll find all that information right there at bestself.coach. All right. Well, then we can't sign off just yet. He's got to talk about his podcast. I'm going to have to um, ask you to show, <laughs> sh show yourself some love. I always love when we can give our audience more great resources. Let's hear about it. Awesome. Thanks, Vincent. I appreciate the plug. So yeah, uh, it's sure. called Clearing Obstacles. It's a business triage. Season one, we did about a dozen episodes last year. They were business coaching sessions. So what we try to do is encapsulate. Here's an hour long conversation where we work with a business owner to unpack their frustrations and uh, and, and listeners got a chance to really experience kind of a, 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 a felt moment of what a business coaching experience would be like. And so that was season one. Season two, I've really broadened the reach in, in some ways and, and narrowed it in others is I'm focusing on um, leadership specifically. Leadership, I mean, like everything, not just like uh, uh, or organizationally, everything starts and ends with the leader, right? They have yep. the most scalable impact within a business and leadership, given all of the changes in the past, oh my gosh, we could even just say three years, but especially the past decade or two, leadership has evolved. The needs for leadership have evolved tremendously. And um, uh, I don't, I'm not sure we're keeping pace with where we need to be going on this conversation. And that that's where I find a tremendous amount of, speaking of leverage in the conversation. So season two, we're going to focus on uh, leadership and t talking to some just killer thought leaders on the subject. I appreciate you sharing all that with our audience, everyone. I hope some of you check out this pod. It's always great to add a new one to the queue. And the show is at That Entrepreneur Show on all social media and YouTube. I am at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media as well. With that, we are signing off from coast to coast. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Vincent. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.